Anyway, um, WrestleMania. Yeah, I was there. Said. He was there. Uh, I let him use my uh, network code to, so he could actually watch it. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Well, it, it was fine because I was at home using <clears throat> it, so it's not like we were both on it. I use it all the time. Don't let him bullshit you. <laughs> anyway. He gave it to me a while ago. I use I don't Actually, I, I use it like... Uh, once, twice a month, yeah. maybe. I don't I'm, use it that often. I'm just, I'm just spreading. I'm creating another fan, really. Is what yeah. Doing. Anyway. Um, yeah, we went to <coughs> Dubai Stadium in, uh, over in Santa Clara, Bay Area. I was texting him saying, wave at me. Yeah. You I don't need you. Yeah, but you wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> I was way up. I, not, not nosebleed territory, but I was like midsection. I was pretty high up. It was over 75,000 people there. So My wife comes in. I was like, hey, Cody's there right now. And she's like, yeah? Can you see him? <laughs> and I was like, no, no, he's probably way up there. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll be more successful four or five years from now. WrestleMania 40, maybe. Be closer to the ring. <laughs> um, but Oh, closer to the ring, those guys. Yeah, there was a, a group of uh, fans that actually dressed up, dressed up like Hulk Hogan, they Macho cool. Man. They looked really cool. And WWE actually asked them to take their stuff off because uh, <clears throat> they thought it would take away from the show. Spoilers, Hulk Hogan actually does show up later on, and nobody knew he'd be there, so that might have been part of it, I don't know. But um, They made him take off their stuff. But they, they gave him some free shirts, you know, stuff like that, but it's still kind of a bummer. Everybody was cosplaying. You know, there was a bunch of people, a bunch of Macho Mans, a bunch of Ultimate Warriors. Um, if you're a wrestling fan at all, what was really cool about this is my all-time favorite, Sting, was doing his last match. Well, I mean, we don't know if it's his last match, but his first ever WrestleMania match. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing a lot of that on the. Uh, I was doing a lot of that uh, when he was wrestling Triple H. <coughs> that was really cool. Um, I got to meet a lot of the superstars at the little meet and greet access thing, which was a lot. They were of fun. all in character too, right? Yeah, most of them. Like Rusev was this mean Russian guy villain. He's like, "Do you want picture American?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." That dude's more American than we. Yeah, are, he's probably from like Missouri or something. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's yeah, like Yokozuna. It, it was very cool, and and. In the, in the match for Sting, if anybody that follows wrestling, he, he never went to the WWE before. He's got over a 30-year career. The, the guy's pushing 60 and probably in better shape than either me or Jason. Probably. Yeah, I couldn't be. I, could, I couldn't last two minutes. I couldn't last 30 seconds out there. Right. I'd be sucking in air, and I'd just yeah. be like, I, I think tap I could, out. I think I could get to the ring, but after I got to the ring, it would be it. Like I could run like Ultimate Warrior to there all energized, and then once I got Your to the ring. heart would be pumping, so the adrenaline would be up yeah. there, and you'd be like, the only okay, way I, I need to sit down for a minute. The only way I could ever make it in wrestling if I was like Mikey Whipwreck's character, where they just beat him up all the time, and you felt bad for him because he never lands a hit. That He'd could be, be the me. Porterville Brawler. No, I'm not. For, no, the vice to Larry Brawler, yeah, yeah, instead okay. of the Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, to Larry Brawler. Be the Everybody hears like Brawler. Larry. What's that? Yeah. Um, what's really cool too? That's the name of our county. In the middle of the match, they had and the city he lives in. They had DX come out, and then they had when they <coughs> come out. These are these two huge groups from the '90s that never got to meet. They were in rival companies, and they uh, they were actually kind of they had each promos other against each other. Yeah, it was especially DX outside. They're like raw, raw, raw on the tank and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, it was just a lot of fun. I'm really happy I got to go. Um, it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing, as far as you know, Sting being there and there's. The only other one in my lifetime I can remember, you know, that was old enough to go was 21. 21 was in uh, Los Angeles. Wow. And every, so, you know, this is what, 31? 31, yeah. yeah. So 10 years between uh, them coming back to California. <coughs> it, it was a ton of fun. And what was cool is I was texting him, like, in the middle of, like, the intermissions and stuff. I could text Jason yeah. about it. We and were talking about, did you see that match? Yeah, we were, we were <laughs> freaking we, out. We were freaking out about Sting and uh, Triple H. What we were, we were, that was right after, because yeah. they did the intermission right after that. I mean, anybody that watched, nine, anybody that watched <clears throat> 90s wrestling, that, that was just, that was, that was a story told over 20 years right yeah. there. I, the my parents, could, sorry, no, go ahead. It, it's the kind of stuff that only wrestling could do. Yeah. Uh, WrestleMania 8 came to Las Vegas, and my, my friend uh, Jade... From that I grew up with, he was coming out to visit, and I was in high school. My parents tried to get tickets and surprise us so we could go to see it, and they they couldn't. The tickets were gone. Yeah, they tried to get tickets. I, I for think it. ours. I think they sold out that day because like we had to we had to do like there was a special promo code we had to put in online to get on. Yeah, see, this was back before all that. This was back. We had to actually even go, worse. You had to go to Ticketmaster. <laughs> yeah, and, we had to camp out. Yeah, my parents they they tried. I mean, bless their heart. They they were gonna try to surprise us to go to WrestleMania Eight. See, there, there's a difference between your parents. My my parents 
hate pro wrestling. They don't like anything to do with it. So I would I would have never got to go to any. Oh that really? Kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My mom and dad took me to two events as a kid. We went. The first one we went to was in um, Anaheim, and um, the 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 head match was um, Hulk Hogan uh, versus Ric Flair. Also, Texas Tornado was supposed to show up that weekend. Was this WCW? This is WWE. WWF. At the time. And WWE didn't exist. Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich was supposed to be there, but he committed suicide. He was on the card, and he didn't show up. Oh, man. That's when he committed suicide. And um, here's a funny thing. The second time he went was Rialto Orange Show, is what it's called. Every year they have the Orange Show in Rialto. And what it is, it's like a carnival. Um, you know, rides and, and stuff. And, um, and uh, we go to the Orange Show... Or it's in San Bernardino. Either way, it's in that area. Not No, it's not Rialto. It's like uh, San Bernardino. Anyway, we went to the Orange Show. And um, <clears throat> I got front row seats on corner of the ring. The bush where I was 14, my sister was 4. The, my sister goes out there and I'm holding her up. The bushwhackers come up and lick my little sister's face. Yeah, you told face. me about that. <laughs> they were just inducted in the Hall of Fame too. Yeah, and I thought I would, that brought up that memory. My sister to this day, and to this, she's twenty eight years old, still talks about that. How <laughs> she hated that. They really licked her. I always wondered if they really licked the kids. Oh yeah. And she confirmed it. Oh, and I also high five Macho Man. That's cool. Macho Man high five. Yeah, me. he just went into the Hall of Fame too. Yeah, yeah. The other one, his, I was at the Hall of Fame. His brother actually inducted him. It was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, the genius. Mm -hmm. uh, Povich. Um, Poffo. Poffo. Lenny yeah. Poffo. Lenny Poffo, yeah. And here's the thing. It was a cage match against Jake the Snake Roberts, which was my little sister's favorite wrestler. And um, Macho Man Randy Savage, when they were having that got Macho Man. Uh, oh, you got to meet Jake the Snake? Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't. Do, it was they weren't take, they weren't taking pictures though. But I got to meet him real quick, and he signed my. Uh, I don't have a look in my program. He signed it. That is so awesome. Yeah, Jake is one of my. I love watching his videos on DDP. He was really cool. He was really. Cool. He is. He is such a cool dude. I mean, you only get a couple seconds, you know, because there's people in line. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. He was really nice. Well, you know, uh, you know the Phantasm movies. Yeah. The guy who played Reggie, the ice cream vendor. Uh huh. He talked to my daughter on the phone. Oh, really? That's cool. When she was like ten. The coolest superstar I met, or when I was there, was Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett actually sat, and even though we had a line, sit there and talk. I had my Gaslight Anthem shirt. It's a, it's a Wasn't rock he band. the guy that fought The Undertaker? No, no, that, that's that's Bray Wyatt. Um, oh, okay. Same, Wade Barrett's same, the bad I, news. I've got some bad news. Oh, okay. Him. See, I don't keep up with wrestling as much as I used to, so I'm kind of relearning. Remember, he's got the beer, the British guy. He was in the, he was in the Intercontinental match. He was oh, okay. the defending champion, and he actually lost yeah. the belt. So, yeah, sorry, guys. I mean, I know... A, I know a ton about classic wrestling. I but can, he's 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 coming up. He's learned. He's. I can tell you everything about classic eighties, seventies, eighties, and nineties wrestling. I am like I, I'm like an encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah. Wade but, Barrett. I go up to the line and I have my Gaslight Anthem T-shirt on his band, favorite band <coughs> line, and he's like Gaslight Anthem. They're huge wrestling fans. So I was like, really? Yeah, they've got it. Actually, I, I met them, so I know I love their music. And they actually, sit there and talked about a couple of their albums for a couple of minutes. Oh, that's. I'm cool. sure everybody's like, get out of the way. I want my autograph. But yeah. he was cool. He sit there and actually talked to me a little, like just this guy to guy, just start talking about music. Awesome. Um, and then it was uh, funny because I got to cut off. I got to switch. We got to switch uh, discs. Okay. So we only get thirty minutes, but we're gonna keep talking. So yeah, don't worry. We'll right Sorry about back. that. We're, we're we're doing it low tech today. So anyway, tell your story. Wade Barrett. <coughs> oh, but yeah, I mean, he just a lot said, of touching. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> no, three off. I wish. No, I'm kidding. I wish. Be like, dude, Wade Barrett totally touched me, bro. Um, he touched my no no parts, and I liked it. Oh, it would have been no no. <laughs> it would have been yes, 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 yes. Now, if Lita would have done that, that would have been amazing. That's which, right, you had the picture of Lita. Yeah, she was just like, hey, what's up? And I was like, hi, Lita. <laughs> hi, how are you? Yeah, pretty much. My no. eyes are up here, yeah. huh? No, it was really quick. She's like, hi, and she signed it. That's signed what she my, said. Exactly, signed my uh, program and got out of there. But Get yeah. out of here, buddy. Get out of here, ugly guy. 
But what was funny is ugly. Wade said the guest was this huge fan of wrestling, and I went back and watched a couple of just a couple live clips of him at concerts and stuff. They had a couple like Wade Barrett like action figures on the side of the stage. I was like, holy shit! I didn't know any of that. So that that was really that's cool. cool. Yeah. Every time I hear bad news, I think of bad news Brown. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the idea. Whenever like somebody says they think they're gonna beat, he's like, if you think you're gonna beat me, I've got some bad news. <laughs> it's pretty funny. You have to watch it. It's his thing. I just think of Bad News Brown from the 80s, I know 90s. Yeah, I know what you're talking Well, that's kind of the gimmick. <laughs> sort of. I mean, he's totally the opposite of, like, the look and everything. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. He doesn't look anything like Bad News Brown had a big, grizzly beard, and he was bald and black and big, and this dude is, like, not. Yeah, huge white guy, all clean <clears throat> cut and stuff. Yeah, he's, yeah. like, a pretty boy in comparison. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, it, it, was, it was fun because it was really fun because we do live in a day and age where you and I could sit there and communicate. Yeah, while you're at show. the event, I'm watching the event. Yeah, and we're just having fun. Because when I was a kid, I watched a lot of wrestling um, events. My uncle, who um, <clears throat> my uncle had a pirate box, a cable pirate box. I remember those, yeah. And I he used a lot to, of wrestling and he way. let me come over every event and watch whatever it was. And there was only four back then. Right. He used to have WrestleMania, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, and Royal Rumble. King of the Ring wasn't one of them yet. <clears throat> nope. Yeah. Nope. nope. That came uh, later in the night, late nineties. See, this is back in the eight, late eighties. I was watching this when he had it, and then in the ninety two, we moved to Las Vegas. Did you watch any old WCW stuff? <clears throat> or was it all WWF at the time? I watched, I watched WCW stuff back then, and I remember there was this wrestler named the Juicer. Oh, it was some bad was, stuff. Was like, he roided up? No. Oh no, he was like this. He's done. He passed away, but he was this young guy. Uh huh. And he wore like um, he kind of had this uh, post-apocalyptic thing going on with like makeup, and he had like a bandana, and a, it was weird. That was weird. I think he used silly string in his act too, and he did a lot of crazy moves. But he's called the Juicer, and he was just odd. But he's passed away. I looked him up. Um, the big wrestlers at that in that time were Ron Simmons, Lex Luger, Harley oh, Race. Saw him over there too. Who? Ron Simmons. Oh, cool. Yeah, he was there. Damn! Yeah, yeah. That yeah. promo with all the old guys was awesome. I'm, I'm texting. Yeah. I'm like Roddy Piper, Ric Flair. Well, what's cool is they endorsed <laughs> Daniel Bryan, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, <clears throat> that was pretty good. And then it's kind of like the next guy. Or... <clears throat> yeah, I, anything Roddy. You know, my my two favorite wrestlers of all time. My all time favorite wrestler, Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream. My second all time favorite wrestler, Rowdy Roddy Piper. You ever listen to his podcast? No, I never have. You should check it out. It's good. I need to. Yeah. And it's funny because I'm showing my wife yesterday. Uh, I said, you see that fruity looking guy in the makeup? <laughs> His dad is my all-time favorite wrestler. She's like... You oh, you were that? talking about Cody Rhodes? <laughs> She's like, you mean that guy who you were talking about who you are showing me interviews the other day? He was talking about, you know, the common man. And I said, yeah, the guy in the polka dots. That's his kid. Yeah. And his older brother does the same thing. That's where he got it from. He's a carbon copy of his older brother. Except well, what's funny is he had his own gimmick that was really over, and then I guess he just wanted to kind of hang out, like, hang out with his brother because they started a tag team together, and then he started to dress like that because his brother was gold dust. What do they call their tag team? Like the Dusts or something? I think just the Rhodes Brothers. I, I don't know, huh. Something like that. But anyway, yeah, because Cody... they think of, a, like, a cool name like... I'm Cosby, sure they did. Like... Cosmic I'm sure they did. I'm sure somebody's going to correct like me. I'm sure they had a name and I don't remember. I don't know. I remember he was, because uh, Cody Rhodes, when he first came out of this thing, like, because uh, he was a pretty boy wrestler, <coughs> he had this thing with, like, fashion tips. He said he was dashing. So they called him, the, like, the dashing uh, the dashing ones or something. But they got, they went, they got rid of that. Um, and then that sounds he, well, terrible. Well, what was funny is he did that, and then he got, like, hurt in character or whatever but nobody and his face had like a scrape on it but of course he's because he's all you know about his looks and everything he freaks out and he wears this like weird plastic mask over his face and he thinks he's all disfigured but he's not it was a really good gimmick i swear he's that reminds me when i was in the hospital when i hurt my neck and i, I was 23 in bad car accident and i'm laying there and they they're like don't and they finally said you can go ahead and move you know you're nothing's broken 
because I had herniated a disc, but nothing was broken. I could move. And I hear this woman, oh my God, my face, he broke my cheekbone. Oh, I'm going to be disfigured my whole life. She's going on and on for like 30 minutes. I'm laying there and I finally decide to sit up and see what she looks like. And I'm expecting this grotesque creature from Bloodborne. And uh, so I sit then, up. Even then she's, he thought Bloodborne didn't exist yet. He thought She's got a little red mark. A little tiny red, you can barely see it, and she's carrying on. Because I guess her husband or something punched her out or something. Jesus. And which was bad, but, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, did anyone show her a mirror? She's probably, it probably hurt, hurt a lot or something. But I'm just like, huh? I'm, I sat up and I'm just like, where? Where's this, I, I expected to see this disfigured woman and she was fine. No. They didn't even have like a band. It was a little red mark. You could barely see it. Right, but I mean, I Co know. Cody Rhodes had a lot of other gimmicks. It, was, <coughs> it didn't just start out as a carbon copy of his brother. I think oh, was, I know he didn't. I know he didn't. But I he, think it was he more, became a carbon copy. Yeah. Well, because they were a tag team. I think that was more of an homage to him. And now it's uh, now he's he's playing the gimmick and yeah, Stardust. I don't see the, thing is, the Gold Dust thing was pretty unique for the time. Right. And. Um, yeah, no, I don't like the Stardust thing either. I think he did better when he was just Cody Rhodes. He needs so to be—he needs to be his own man. But just he already like, was. That's the thing. That's—I mean—he needs to go back, like Dusty, or Dustin. I mean, Dustin—he was a carbon copy of his dad at first, right? And then he became Cowboy Gold Boots, Dust. and then he became Gold Dust when they had that falling out, right? But that's why I think it's more of an homage <coughs> to his brother than him copying him because he <laughs> was his own thing. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's an homage or what. The fact is, is he looks just like him. Just different makeup scheme. They're like a new Legion of Doom looking guys, except Legion of Doom was these tough, you know. Right. They were the road warriors. The Ascension are kind know? of the new Legion of Doom, but I don't think you know who they are. Not yet. I'm. I'm like we said. I'm getting caught up. Or they're trying to be. Anyway. <clears throat> Give me some time. I'm getting back into it. Um, here's a question for you guys, and we were talking about it earlier. Do you think the gimmick wrestling of the early 90s and late 80s and 80s is better than what it is now? Because you hear a lot from people, you know, wrestling today just isn't what it used to be. It just sucks now. Everyone's pissed off. Now, I wonder, I keep thinking Vince McMahon looks, I know Vince McMahon's looking at the numbers of what money he's making. And I have a feeling, he's, and I know he's making more money now than he ever did, and that's what he bases it on. But maybe it's just guys like me who love that time period, you know, where you got guys like Jake the Snake and Earthquake and Typhoon and, you know, the, the, the original Undertaker, the not different guy, but the original style that he wore. Because he's not the same Undertaker he was all those years. I'm not talking physically, but I'm talking about this yeah, look. Yeah, he couldn't be, though. He had to redefine his character to be around that long. <clears throat> Because what he got way stale. Well, yeah, he didn't. I, I get that it, he evolved, you know, and then you know, like the whole. But I'm talking about like the Paul Bear years. Yeah, I know what you mean. <clears throat> where he's like the supernatural. Like, Eighties to early nineties. Yeah, like because yeah. the the other night when he wrestled against uh, was it Wade Barrett. No, or, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Sorry, guy. I I'm getting there. He's actually one of my favorites right now. I really like Bray. Um, it's all him at access to. He looked like him. a doofus to me. He's awesome. <clears throat> he's he's one of the best. He's, he might be the best guy in the mic right now. He's really good. I haven't watched him enough, but he just seemed like a doofus to no, me. No, he's awesome. But um, I'll, I'll show you. A couple anyway, matches. the guy, so so Undertaker, he wins, but he's like falling over and he's like all <laughs> beat up. And I'm thinking, old Undertaker never got like that. He was like superhuman. Well, he yeah, but he's you know fifty. I'm not talking about, but he was whatever he was back then. But he wasn't really superhuman. Right. It was all an act. Right. I think that... I'm, I'm just saying the act isn't there anymore of him being superhuman. No. He can still pretend to be superhuman even though he's 50. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think this year they tried to kind of make it more of like a redemption story. Well, he lost last year and became mortal, but now even though he's mortal, he won. But they didn't know. really play it up as that. No. They played it more like he was mad at, uh, at Wyatt for... Trying making, to take his gimmick. Making fun of him. Yeah. yeah. Saying he was the next... You know, next big thing. The next dead man. Yeah. I don't know. He, the last few years, he's <coughs> he, he's gotten beat up pretty... It seems like he's gotten beat up pretty bad in his matches. And I don't know if that's because he's trying to... Because he's 
a baby face. He's trying to sell more and make you feel for him. That's so weird when you say that about The Undertaker. But he is a baby face. It's just weird thinking of Undertaker as a baby face. But he's been a baby face for like the last 15 years. But that's the thing. Just saying the word baby face. and The Undertaker, who's six, like seven or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, like six, whatever. And he's just grisly. Yeah. He reminds me of my dad. Well, yeah. Fan favorite. My dad's but, you know, shorter. Face is you know what they're called in wrestling. Right. He's the good but, guy. But I can't tell if he's just trying if he's trying to sell that way and make it look like he's hurt, you know what I mean? Or if he actually is hurt. He could actually just be hurt and he can't pretend to be as invincible because anymore. he is fifty. Right. Or, could be. He could just or be he's tired try, out. Or he's trying to play it up so you can get some sympathy for him. Which if that's what he's doing, it worked perfect. I don't know. I just know that the the gimmick of but here's the thing do we want the gimmick back? do we need you know doink the clown no we don't sadly need... sadly he died oh that, I mean that Matt, sucks but... Matt something he died a couple years ago a few years no, ago no we don't need doink the clown but you know do we need characters like that not necessarily doink the clown but you know hillbilly Jim junkyard mm. dog these guys all had a cool name they weren't just the name Seth Rollins or yeah or uh, you know um, Randy One of my Orton favorites, by the way. Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. I mean, come on. What was we, we were talking about? I'm watching. I'm watching. Randy Orton's been around how many years? You'd say, oh, like thirteen, probably. Like 12, thirteen 12 or years. Thirteen years. And he's had. And and they're they're talking. And when they're doing the commentating the other night, because I know he hasn't been around for more. I was thinking like 10, 12 years. About thirteen years. I wasn't sure exactly. And they're like, he's the ten-time champion, world champion. I'm thinking. He's had the title 10 times in the last 13 years. You know what that tells me? That guy can't hold the job. He can't hold the title. So he's not that great. That's what that tells me. Yeah. You look at Ric Flair, 30, whatever, 40 years, and he's had the title like 16 or 20 times or whatever. That, he can't hold the title. Well, it's not really... And granted, I know it's I know it's scripted on who gets what. Right. But that's the thing. It has to do also with the title changing hands. Remember, <clears throat> before they had more of a run, like Ric Flair was champion of NWA forever. You right, and I mean? Hulk Hogan was champion, champion for three forever. and a half years. They don't really do that as much. And but I, why? I, that's the thing. Yeah, I don't. These guys. Minus Cena. Cena was champion on and off forever. So. But you and so remember. was Triple H. Triple H did like a three or four. Year for year run. But you gotta remember, time. these guys need to have the personality to hold it. I understand. Because it's, it's not about actually physically, you know, they're all physically good specimens. They can all wrestle, mostly, most of them. But they have to have that champion personality to hold it. Um, you know, and, you know, Lesnar's had it about a year, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and... I don't. I hate Lesnar. I think he's a. I think he's a jackass. I mean, nothing against his abilities. I just don't like the guy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, he's a great wrestler. <clears throat> Personally, he's not my favorite. Yeah, I just don't like the guy. I hate that he beat my hero Randy Couture. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> mad about it. Yeah. Anyway, but that's the thing. You know, Lesnar wasn't a great champion. Paulie Dangerously was the great champion. Sure. Paul Heyman. He was the real champion. Because he was the personality behind that. And um, like you were saying, well, you think I, he's going to go over to Rollins, right? Yeah, well, I, I think they'll have him change up. I, I think they're going to turn the lights in her face because he's just getting cheered everywhere he goes. <clears throat> Which is weird. Because people just love to see him beat people up, man. It's yeah. loved. And I, I get remember, it. I remember seeing that match years ago with Lesnar where they, he's, they, the doctor said he landed on his head wrong. Yeah. When he did his flip. Yeah. And they said that Gets if he angle. was... Yeah. Oh, excuse me. The doctors had told him, and he was in a good interview, that if he was, if he didn't have all that muscle that he has, he'd be done. He would have been dead. Yeah. He would have broke his neck. Yeah. And I'm thinking, man, the guy's the guy's a big muscle, and he's. I I get tired of these big muscle men. I I really liked the '80s and '90s wrestling because you had a variety. I like sure. variety. Well, but they have a variety now. I mean, you've got... You yeah, know, I guess you're I right. I think the next big feud, honestly, is going to be Brock and Seth Rollins, which is, looks like where they're going, and I think Paul's going to turn on them and go with uh, Seth, and that'll be, I mean, you know, Rollins is an in-shape guy, but he's not anywhere near Brock Lesnar, you know. Brock no, he's... beat him into submission. He's normal size. Yeah. So, I mean, they do have a variety, and you do have stuff like that, so it's not like they don't. Um, I think the thing about the names is they... They try to, I think, 
in the nineties when the mid nineties when they started doing that with the NWO and stuff, it worked as far as uh, helping people uh, believe it a little bit more. Like oh, with Razor, the real name. Yeah, because Razor Ramon came out and he was Scott Hall, not Instead Razor of, Ramon. Yeah, Nash was so they Instead felt like Diesel. oh maybe Scott Hall's really over there and maybe he's coming from the WWF to invade WCW. But because it's been going on so long, I think maybe you could kind of switch it back around the other way. Because yeah, I think I we think all know that uh, it's getting stale. Yeah, we all know that Dean Ambrose is not Dean Ambrose's name. We know so <coughs> he started out as, and then he started out as John Moxley at our in Ring of Honor and stuff like that. Tyler Black was Seth Rollins' name. So yeah, yeah, well, that's it's still, but Seth Rollins and Tyler Black are real names. Well, that's my that's my point though. They, not they still the Annihilator or something, right? <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if. I think there's room for people like called the Annihilator, like TNA had the Abyss and stuff like that. I think there's room for both. I don't think you really need to go completely well, one way Well, that's the, the way other. it was back then. Yeah. And then you'd have guys that were like mixes, like Jake the Snake Roberts. Right. And he had the snake, but he was still Jake Roberts. Right. Jake the Snake. Right. You Diamond know, Dallas Page. DVD. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You had... Their gimmick was mixed into their name. I do agree with that. They could do more... <clears throat> they could definitely be a little bit more creative with that. <clears throat> we don't yeah. necessarily need... Rowdy, Roddy don't... Piper wasn't just Roddy Piper. Yeah, and he was also the Scottish, you know, guy wearing the kilt. Right. With the attitude that right. could talk. And, you know, these guys... And, yeah, they've gone they've gone a little silly with it, like when Dusty Rhodes had the pink polka dots. Yeah. Even though Dusty could make anything work. And he did. He got over. Yeah. And, you know, then they had things like Doink the Clown, which Doink... The guy himself, Matt... Uh, I, can't, I can't remember his last name... Matt Brol Barlin or something like that. Anyway, he himself was a great wrestler, but he was a clown. Right. And it was kind of silly. It's pretty silly. And then they had Dink. And it was just all kind of silly. But that's the thing, you know, we had uh, you know, um But they kinda have gone that way. I mean, you know, they, we had the Iron Sheik, we had Sergeant Slaughter. Right. But that had, that's part of it. They they sort of did go a little bit that way. I mean, you've got Rusev. The fact that a Rusev as the evil Russian worked against John Cena, the I super do like, American. I do like the concept of Rusev. I, I can't do. believe any of that worked. I, I really like. I thought that, I thought I was watching a gimmick from 1985. Yeah, a lot have, of a loved res, it. Uh, have a Russian wrestler these in this, and yeah. his wife that or whoever. Yeah, looks like what's her, looks like what's her face from Rocky Four. Yeah, exactly. She's got the blonde hair and the, and the white dress. But it worked, and that's so, fine. And I wish they had more of that. I, wish I don't. I mean, it, 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 keep it balanced. I think they could do both. Well, they don't have enough is what I'm saying. They need, I don't say don't make every single wrestler, because you're always going to have Bob Backlund, you know, guys like him, that are that are just kind of vanilla. Right. You know, guys like, you know, because you got guys like Randy well, Orton. Bob, and Bob was the... Uh, all these the other cowboy. guys that are just very vanilla. Right. As far as their name and their gimmick. Well, he was the, ca it was the cowboy, right? Bob Cowboy Orton or... No, Bob Backlund. Oh, sorry. Not Bob Orton, oh, his sorry. father. Yeah, 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 sorry. Cowboy Bob Orton was cool. Right. And he was Roddy Piper's Yeah, enforcer, yeah. Enforcer with the cast. No, Bob Backlund, who held the title for like six years okay, back sorry. in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think of the wrong person. Yeah. And then he became the crazy conservative guy. And then he'd go and shake everyone's hand. He was so weird. The guy's strange. Um... But he's, he's, he, he was entertaining to a point, but he was kind of vanilla because of that. But That's anyway, what you're saying, we could sit here and talk about wrestling all day. Um, you want to talk about some other stuff.